EA has canceled their big presentation of the year, Hunt Showdown just got a major update, Bethesda released some cool new Starfield images, and much more on Today in Gaming. Hey guys, Levelcap here, and EA Play 2022 has been cancelled. The annual event served as EA's E3 showcase presentation for upcoming games and major updates. According to the publisher, this year things aren't lining up to show you everything on one date. Battlefield 2042's problematic launch and favorable reviews and a dwindling player count might have finally made a dent in EA's zeal. A recent internal town hall meeting at EA painted a pretty grim picture of the company. They admitted to underestimating the impact of Battlefield 2042's buggy launch while overestimating DICE's ability to fix the game. They recently announced that 2042's first season is delayed to sometime in the summer. More recently, they announced their Dead Space remake was originally targeting a 2022 launch, but that's been moved to early next year. Before 2042's launch, EA had put multiple projects on the back burner like a new Need for Speed game, PGA Tour, and more. With all these delays and likely more piling up behind the scenes, it made sense that EA would cancel their annual presentation. And all things considered, canceling EA Play seems to be in line with a lot of other things going on in the game industry. It's clear that EA are having a rough time, but so are many other game developers and publishers right now. Diverting time and resources away from developing games to host a big gaming event with little to show seems like it would do much more to hurt than to help their current situation. The 1.8 update for the Extraction Royale Hunt Showdown is now live. It hit PC test servers yesterday, promising to address some long-standing performance issues introduced in the 1.7 update from last November. Unfortunately, it looks like the developers haven't quite figured everything out yet. 1.8 improves three key server issues by reducing processing costs for AI enemies and interactable objects, removing an unused component that was impacting server performance and fixing idle AI performance spikes. They also addressed a client-side issue where the game was calling on the Steam API too often. You should notice a minor performance bump across the board, especially if you have a slightly older PC. The devs also made the game's lightweight profile available again to help identify the cause of other performance issues. You'll find this tool listed under the game's betas in Steam. Enabling it will send the devs more information about your hardware and gameplay. However, it does come with a minor performance penalty during extended play session, so only use it if you feel like being a guinea pig. The 1.8 patch also fixes a ton of bugs and makes some minor gameplay tweaks. Doors can now be opened toward you by walking backward while interacting with them. This is a subtle but significant change that should open up a ton of stealth options. Basic AI enemy now won't react in unison to stimuli like footsteps or gunfire. Each enemy will respond individually. This change should make them react more naturally to player activity. The list of bug fixes is pretty extensive, though most of them address issues with the game's various maps. We'll have the full patch notes linked below if you want to read through them for yourself. But I'm curious what you guys think of Hunt Showdown. Are you playing it? Do you think it's in a good place right now? Do you think it needs a bit more work? Let us know in the comments. Bethesda released new concept art for their upcoming space RPG Starfield in a developer update video. It showcases ship designs, interiors, cities, and more. And while it looks impressive, we still have yet to see the game in motion outside of a cinematic gameplay teaser. Bethesda is teasing a big summer reveal ahead of the game's November 11th launch. The developer update video also includes info about companions and an oblivion dialogue mechanic that was brought back for Starfield. The game is Bethesda this first new brand new IP in literal decades and it'll launch as an Xbox and PC exclusive title. Open world adventure brawler Elden Ring has sold over 12 million copies since launching three weeks ago. The game is widely celebrated as the developer's most significant achievement since their iconic title Dark Souls. Despite some performance issues and the standard fare of gameplay bugs, reviews from players have also been getting more positive over time. The game launched to a pretty mixed initial reaction thanks to those issues, but updates have done a lot to smooth things out for most players. Elden Ring's success has prompted the developers to consider a new franchise franchise of games based upon it. Ubisoft dropped the Tom Clancy branding from their upcoming free-to-play competitive FPS X Defiant. 
Last year, they announced the game as a proper Tom Clancy title based on their existing games like Splinter Cell, The Division, and Ghost Recon. Factions representing each franchise served as ex-Defiance roster of characters and each faction had unique abilities. Ubisoft has updated the game's branding to exclude any mention of the Tom Clancy umbrella. They're adding additional factions from outside of the game's original pool of licenses while keeping the ones that they already announced. Branding issues aside, the real question is, well, what updates the devs have made to the gameplay. X Defiant looks like a mashup of Call of Duty and Valorant. That was the sticking point for many gamers on social media who felt that it looked like a quick cash grab leveraging an iconic name and derivative gameplay. Ubisoft are currently sending out playtest invitations for X Defiant. Controversial streamer Dr. Disrespect is following in Ubisoft's footsteps. The doc recently co-founded a game studio called Midnight Society. They're working on a PvP FPS multiplayer shooter and it sounds like a big part of their business plan is selling NFTs. Players will be able to buy NFTs that offer in-game rewards and items. They can then sell those NFTs if they want. Ubisoft dove headfirst into the NFT game development world recently with the launch of their Quartz platform. It offers NFTs for Ghost Recon Breakpoint. The backlash to Quartz and NFT games in general has been pretty severe. Midnight Society's announcement comes before any gameplay or even gameplay concepts have been released. They're offering offering multiple early access packs but haven't announced their first game's projected launch date. Offering NFTs also means that Midnight Society's games will be banned from Steam since Valve issued a total crypto ban on their store. The Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection could be coming to PC on July 15th. The collection includes Uncharted 4 and its standalone DLC, The Lost Legacy. Sony officially confirmed that the game is launching later this year but haven't announced an actual date yet. The leak could be a placeholder date. The collection was released for PlayStation 5 in January and received high praise. It offers improved performance and visuals, and while that doesn't mean all that much considering how good the games looked on last-gen hardware, it does bode well for the PC release. Release. Sony have been on a home run streak with their PC ports. Their latest, 2018's God of War, is an exceptional port and is considered by many players to be the definitive version of the game. A big update for Sony's latest first-party showstopper, Horizon Forbidden West, offers some key improvements and critical fixes. Stability, performance, and visual issues have all been addressed on top of a laundry list of quest bugs and other issues. The game has been very well reviewed despite whatever issues that it might have. Vampire Battle Royale Blood Hunt is coming back online for playtesting starting March 25th. It had been available for a few months earlier in the year as part of an early access program on PC. The developers decided to take Take it offline to focus on improving the game. It sounds like they've made some significant updates that should improve performance, visibility, and gameplay balance. Exactly what's been changed or improved hasn't been revealed though. Performance was one of the bigger complaints players had about the previous playtest. Hopefully things are a bit smoother this time around. You'll get access to the new test if you played the previous one. Before we get to our final story today, I just wanted to say thanks for tuning in. I hope we're covering all the gaming news that you're interested in, and if not, let us know in the comments what stories you might be interested in. And beyond that, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to support the channel. A new extended gameplay video showcasing the roguelike shooter Returnal's upcoming Ascension expansion is now live. It includes dev commentary explaining what players can expect. Ascension will add two big elements, a co-op mode and an endless mode called the the Tower of Sisyphus. You'll climb the tower by fighting through a series of arena battles, ranking up resources and points that you can use to unlock new gear. The climb includes boss fights and gets harder the higher up that you go. Ascension launches on the 23rd as a free update, and based on this new gameplay footage, it looks like it'll offer a ton of replayability. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.